Hello and welcome to this video, we're going to be learning about trigonometric identities. As usual, there are some exam questions in this video's description that you can try afterwards. You should already know the exact value of sine of 60. It's square root 3 over 2. You should also know the exact value of cos of 60. That's 1 half. Now if we divided the sine of 60 by the cos of 60, we would do square root 3 over 2, divide by 1 half. And to divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. And now you'll see these twos here will cancel, so we just end up with square root 3. Now square root 3 is what you would get if you did the tan of 60. So what we've managed to show here is that the sine of 60, divided by cos of 60, is equal to tan of 60. Is this just a coincidence, or does it work for other angles as well? Well, let's try. Sine of 47, that gives you this number here. Cos of 47 is this number here, and tan of 47 is this number here. Now what happens if you do the sine of 47 divide by the cos of 47? Well, you get this number here, which matches exactly with the tan of 47. It turns out that this is always going to be true for any angle you choose. So if you do sine of an angle, we'll call it theta, divide by cos of theta, you will always get tan of theta. So we replace this equal sign here with an identity sign, since it's always true. Now if you take this identity and do the reciprocal of both sides, that's also true. If you do the reciprocal of the left, then we can just turn this fraction upside down, and the reciprocal of the right is just 1 over tan theta. These two identities here often come in handy when trying to solve trigonometric questions. Now what about if we took the sine of 60 and squared it, so sine squared 60? Well that's just square root 3 over 2, squared. If you square the square root 3 you get 3, and if you square 2 you get 4. So sine squared of 60 is 3 quarters. What about cos squared of 60? Well cos of 60 is just 1 half, so this is 1 half squared, and a half times a half is a quarter. Now if you add together sine squared 60 and cos squared 60, you'll just do 3 quarters plus 1 quarter, which is 4 quarters, or 1 whole. So this equals 1. Now it turns out this actually works for any angle, not just 60. So we arrive at our second identity. If you take an angle and do the sine of it and then square it, and then do the cos of this angle and square that, and then add those together, you will always get 1. So we say sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identically equal to 1. This identity could be written in two other ways that are often more useful. First of all, if we subtract cos squared theta from both sides, if you subtract it from the left, you just get sine squared theta, and if you subtract it from the right, you get 1 minus cos squared theta. And also, the other version, if you subtract sine squared theta from both sides, if you subtract it from the left, you've just got cos squared theta, and if you subtract sine squared theta from the right, you get 1 minus sine squared theta. Sometimes the bottom two versions of this identity are more useful in questions. Let's have a look at one such question. So if we take our identities and keep them at the top so we can remember what they were, we've got the ones involving tan, and then we've also got this sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, and it's two rearrangements. So let's try this question here. We need to show that 2 sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identically equal to 2 minus cos squared theta. When we solve questions like this, we need to start with the left-hand side, do some manipulation, and then end up with the right-hand side. So I've taken a copy of the left hand side. Looking at the right hand side, I can see there are no sine squared thetas, it's just 2 minus cos squared theta. So if we look at this sine squared theta here in the question, we need to remove that. So if we look at this identity here, sine squared theta is identically equal to 1 minus cos squared theta, we can use that one to remove the sine squared theta. So what we're going to do is write this one out again, but replace the sine squared theta with 1 minus cos squared theta. So we have two lots, of sine squared theta, but remember we're going to replace that with 1 minus cos squared theta, and then plus cos squared theta. Now we just need to expand this bracket here. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times minus cos squared theta is minus 2 cos squared theta. And finally we have the plus cos squared theta at the end. Now we're almost there, we've got minus 2 cos squared theta plus cos squared theta, which is just minus 1 cos squared theta. So we end up with 2 minus cos squared theta which is what we wanted to show. You can see this matches the right-hand side of the identity in the question. So we've now finished. We started with the left-hand side, and we ended up with the right-hand side. Let's try this question here. 
So we need to show that tan theta plus 1 over tan theta is identically equal to 1 over sine theta cos theta. Now I notice in this one the left hand side has tans, but the right hand side doesn't. So we're going to need to remove all of the tans, so we're probably going to need to use the top two identities. So let's write out the left hand side again. Remember we need to start with the left hand side and end up at the right hand side. So the identity starts with tan theta, but we know from the first identity that this is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So let's replace that with sine theta over cos theta, and then it says 1 over tan theta, and we know that is equal to cos theta over sine theta. So we'll put plus cos theta over sine theta. Now we've managed to remove all of the tan thetas, which is good, but we need to also make it look like it does in the question. In the question, it has one single fraction, whereas we've got two fractions. So let's combine these together as one fraction. To do that, we're going to need a common denominator. The common denominator for cos theta and sine theta would be sine theta cos theta. Let's start with the first fraction here, and we want to write this over sine theta cos theta. At the moment, we have cos theta on the bottom, so we also need a sine theta. So we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by sine theta. If we multiply the numerator by sine theta, it's sine theta times sine theta, which is sine squared theta. On the bottom, we've already got a cos theta, and we multiply it by sine theta, so sine theta cos theta. For the second fraction, we want to multiply this one by cos theta over cos theta. So if we multiply the top by cos theta, we get cos squared theta, and if we multiply the bottom by cos theta, it's sine theta cos theta. Now that we have a common denominator, we can combine these together in one fraction. So we end up with sine squared theta plus cos squared theta over sine theta cos theta. However, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identically equal to 1 from this identity here. So we can replace the numerator of this fraction with 1. So we end up with 1 over sine theta cos theta, which matches the right-hand side of what we were trying to show. Now let's try this question here. We need to show that all of this stuff on the left hand side here is just equal to tan theta. So we'll start with this left hand side. Now the first thing I notice is there's three terms here and they all have a sine theta in them. So what I'm going to do is factorize out sine theta. So I have sine theta and then a big bracket and now I need to get all of those terms. Now we need to multiply sine theta by something to get sine to the fourth theta tan theta. Well, if I've already got one sine theta, I need three more, so I need sine cubed theta, and I also need that tan theta. And now to get the second term here, again, I've already got sine theta, and I'm after sine cubed theta, so I need sine squared theta, and then I also need the cos theta. And for the final term, it's sine theta cos theta. I already have the sine theta, so I just need cos theta. So we've got sine theta, and then a bracket, and we're going to need to manipulate the terms inside the bracket. So the first term, sine cubed theta tan theta, has a tan theta in it. I'm going to change the tan theta using the identity into sine theta over cos theta. So we have sine cubed theta times sine theta over cos theta. Now you can just times these together and you'll get sine to the 4 theta over cos theta. Now since we've got a fraction, let's upgrade the size of these brackets. And since this is over cos theta, what I'm going to do is write all of the remaining terms over cos theta as well. So I have this sine squared theta cos theta next, and I want to write it over cos theta. So I've got sine squared theta cos theta, but if I want to write it over cos theta, I need to multiply the top by cos theta as well. So I get sine squared theta cos squared theta. And I also want to write this final term, the cos theta over cos theta. So if I need a cos theta on the bottom, I need to multiply by a cos theta on the top. So cos theta times by itself cos squared theta. The reason I've wrote all of these over cos theta is so that I can combine them as one fraction, which we'll do now. So we have sine theta and then a bracket, and then inside this bracket we can now combine as one fraction all over cos theta, and then it's just the numerators. Now on the top of this fraction we can do some more factorising. So if we just look at the first two terms here and ignore the last term for a moment, we'll leave that as cos squared theta we can factorise out sine squared theta from these two terms. So we have sine squared theta, and then we'll have a bracket, and we need to get sine to the 4 theta, so we need another sine squared theta, and then to get sine squared theta cos squared theta, we need a cos squared theta. Now notice inside the bracket we have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, which we know from this identity is equal to 1. So we can just replace that bracket with a 1. So we have sine squared theta times 1, 
plus cos squared theta, which of course is just equal to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Now once again we have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, which we know is equal to 1. So we can replace this with a 1, so we've got sine theta, and then inside the bracket we've got a cos theta on the bottom, but on the top we've just got 1, which is equal to sine theta times 1 over cos theta, which is the same as sine theta over cos theta, which we know from the other identity is equal to tan theta, which is exactly what it says on the right hand side of this identity. One thing that you should note with questions like this is very often there's more than one way of approaching it, as long as you show a very logical method step by step of how to get from the left hand side to the right hand side, then you'll be able to get the marks in the question. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Now's a good time to check out the exam questions in the video's description. Also, take a look at the video I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.